Virgin Islands National Park and St. John, treasured for its soft white beaches and tropical beauty. But just beneath its blue waters lies an ecological treasure, a breathtaking undersea world of the coral reef. Millions of individual coral polyps join together to build these spectacular formations, creating an interconnected community of living animals and plants which are essential to the lives of hundreds of thousands of species, including humans. But our coral reefs are in trouble. Coral reefs in the Virgin Islands are in the highest risk category worldwide, and that's a real cause for concern. Both natural forces and human activities are damaging the reefs. Natural forces such as hurricanes and winter storms generate swells that break the coral. Predators such as bristle worms, snails, even damselfishes eat the live coral polyps. There are diseases. In the early 1980s, white band disease swept through the Caribbean and killed off most of the elk horn and stag coral. Overfishing and poor land use practices are the two most damaging human activities that are occurring in the Virgin Islands today. Anchors drag on coral. Ships run aground. There was even a cruise ship that ran into St. John. Sewage goes into nearshore waters. After over a decade of documenting the changes on the coral reefs around the Virgin Islands, our research group is very concerned because we're seeing absolutely no recovery on the reefs. Unfortunately, once damaged, it is impossible to restore a reef to its original condition. However, some scientists believe it may be possible to jumpstart recovery by transplanting healthy coral colonies to damaged areas. But where will the colonies we transplant come from? With this question in mind, scientists with the Biological Resources Division of the U.S. Geological Survey and the Virgin Islands National Park, working alongside community volunteers, have taken naturally occurring fragments of fast-growing corals from areas where they are unlikely to survive and transplanted them to other reefs. They are documenting the survival and growth of the transplanted fragments as well as natural coral colonies with a grant funded by Canon USA through the National Park Foundation. Three species of coral, elkhorn, staghorn, and finger coral are the perfect candidates for this project. They were selected because they grow quickly compared to other corals, up to several inches per year. We're trying to mimic what happens naturally. Coral reproduce one of two ways. Sexually, such as when egg and sperm fertilize, or asexually, such as when a coral is broken up by, say, a large winter storm wave and it breaks it into many fragments. We go and find fragments of the species that primarily reproduce by fragmentation take them from environments that are marginal for their survival and take them over to a reef that is more stable. But finding just the right place on the reef is a little tricky sometimes because you have to find an area of dead coral that will take the shape of the fragment you found. When you found just the right place, we secure it with plastic cable ties hoping to optimize the chance that the fragment will cement to the bottom and then be able to grow. After they are attached, the fragments are identified with a bright numbered tag, measured, photographed, and mapped. In all, 60 colonies were transplanted at Trunk Bay and Whistling Key. 75 naturally occurring colonies are being studied at Hawks Nest and Leinster Bays and Whistling Key. These serve as controls to be compared to the transplanted colonies and to teach us even more about natural colony survival and growth. Over 40 dedicated volunteers, coordinated by the Friends of the Virgin Islands National Park, are trained to observe and record data, as well as photograph the coral colonies in the study. Each colony is visited by a team of volunteers every month. I think the biggest positive to this is the fact that somebody that just lives here and works here in everyday life can take a couple hours every month and just as a novice snorkeler 
really work on a groundbreaking project and have hands-on experience as far as the life of the coral reef here and hopefully help the longevity of the coral reefs, which indirectly or directly affects everybody that lives in the Virgin Islands. I snorkel for a living. I take people out snorkeling and I show them the coral. So I've been very concerned that the corals have not looked well because of disease, because of a lot of stirring up with the hurricanes. And so this has been a fascinating chance for me to actually see the growth and monitor it. Even though it is a fast-growing species, that's okay. At least we know that it can be done. And it's been exciting to see really uh, what, what we've been able to see just in uh, eight months. The volunteers also include a class of fifth and sixth graders from Pine Peak School in St. John. You know, you took coral as something that was beautiful. You didn't really think about it as a living thing the way we have started to as a class. How do you feel about that now? What do you think about coral? What do you know about that? Well, I didn't think that it was like a living thing. I thought it was just a rock or something, but now I know differently. Well, I really didn't think about the polyps inside. I just thought it was a big one-celled creature. What are some of the things you've been able to do as a class because of the Coral Transplant Project? Well, we've learned how to use and operate a digital camera underwater. We learned how to dive underwater and like clean off the tags with the scrubbies. We learned how to write underwater. We have learned how to work in group underwater. We learned like what coral looks like when it when it's dead and like has diseases and stuff. We got to make posters mm -hmm. uh, to hang up in Coos Bay about how to be nice to the coral. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like is one of your accomplishments when you go out there? Both times I've gone, the first time we found like no coral and stuff, we couldn't find any. And the second time we found all of our coral. Managing all the data is a time-consuming necessity. Photographs in the Canon digital cameras are downloaded to a computer at the Friends of the National Park Office. Each picture has to be positively identified, and that's difficult sometimes because marine growth on the number tags makes them hard to read. Then they are organized in a database by species, location, and date. All of this desk work is balanced by the fun of seeing local people and visitors really enjoy the project. At Trong Bay, the transplanted coral can be seen on the park's underwater trail. Every day, hundreds of people snorkel at Trunk Bay. Many of them are snorkeling for the first time and do not know that coral is a living animal nor realize how fragile it is. This project has been really great in educating people about the reef and what they can do to help. In the past nine months of monitoring, we've learned that the transplanted fragments are surviving at the same rate as the naturally occurring colonies. They've grown very well. We, we were very excited with some of our colonies that were actually growing over their strap. We could see several inches of growth in the first six months. And 29 is a beautiful um, staghorn coral over at Leinster. And at first, the, the tips were getting chomped off and then some algae grew over it. But in the swells, the algae had been blown off and then that gave opportunity for the coral to grow normally. So you get attached to these guys. There are certain, certain critters that you really get fond of when you watch them for a while. While we can't control the forces of nature, there is still much we can do in our challenge to help preserve the coral reefs. By the time the Cannon Coral Reef Project concludes in May of 2001, we will have evaluated the practicality of transplanting at-risk coral fragments and gained valuable data on the day-to-day -day dynamics on coral reefs. But true protection depends upon all of us doing our part to save this precious heritage for both the essential roles it plays in our lives and for the wonder it inspires.